Hello and welcome. In a previous video we looked at installing a child theme. In that example we used 2021. Of course you can use any theme you like for that, that kind of thing. The big advantage of using child themes is that you're building on the work that's already previously been done so you're not reinventing the wheel. If you want more control, you're going to have to build a theme yourself. As you can see here, there's quite comprehensive documentation going through the various theme basics, the template files, style sheets, the hierarchy, all that sort of stuff. File sections, theme functionality, you, you name it, it's all, it's all there. Everything you want to know and a whole lot more. But you can get a head start on all the stuff by using a starter theme. There are of course a number of WordPress starter themes. I'll go through a few of them. There's this one called Naked, which has a fairly nice sort of way of sort of getting things started. There is another one called Blank Slate. And Bones, which is another reasonably popular one. We have HTML5 blank based on the HTML5 boilerplate. There's one here called responsive. It looks quite nice sort of out, out of the box. And we have one based on um, on it's called timber and it's based on the twig library so if you wanted to use twig theming I'll, be, I'll cover this in a in a future video and the one that I quite like dealing with is this one called underscores the reason I use underscores quite a lot for quite a lot of projects is because one it's done by automatic the people behind WordPress it has a nice really easy way of generating a theme which I'll show you in it shortly and you can also add all sorts of things like WooCommerce support. And how, how do you do a starter? Well, you start with your theme name. Um, let's just call it my starter theme. Then we can we'll click on the advanced options. Um, you can leave, leave all those blank if you, you can fill them out. You can add WooCommerce boilerplate and Sassify and click generate and what it's going to do now is it gives you a, a theme to download. Moving into code, what we have here, I've just copied the, unzipped the file, the file I downloaded and put that into my themes folder we have a theme here called um, my starter my starter theme let's just have a look and see what we've got in here we'll just work our way through this so we've got an includes folder and you've got includes for jetpack template tags woocommerce customize custom header so there's going down to our JavaScript we've got a customizer and a navigation script already for a, for a drop-down menu so that's already done we've got language translation files here we have um, SAS already sort of set out quite nicely here we have our, our styles.css which um, contains information about our theme, our starter theme, its URI, all that information is already pre-filled for us and so that's going to compile down and give us a, a style.css which will have all the meta information about our theme then, then there's a whole bunch of imports abstracts, generic, normalize, box sizing, box base, components, all, all uh, jet, Jetpack's infinite scroll. Of course, you can sort of pull all these things out if you don't want them. There's also a, a, 
another one sort of set aside just for WooCommerce itself. And if we look at all our different um, abstracts here, we've got our mi we've got mixins, variables, so colors, columns, structure. If we want to change our, our colors, we've got, all, got our variables and all that sort of stuff all, all set up. We've got our base elements all, 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 ready, all ready to go. You can cha change, change any of these. Typography is already set up for heading, for fonts, copy, all, all that stuff. Then we've got some components, comments, content. And you sort of see it's kind of set up in a way, posts and pages. But it makes it all kind of e easy to find things and makes it all nicely modular. We have a media, a navigation. The nav navigation can be quite easy. Yeah. It's all, all set up. And widgets, widget styles, base styles are already set up. Some generic ones for, for box sizing, good old normalize. Then we have our layouts, our different, kind, different layouts, whether we've got a, a sidebar or a no sidebar or whether it's the content and then the sidebar or we're going to go to the sidebar on the left and then content that's all sorted various plugins things utilities the CSS is just really well sort of set up moving on to what what else we've got in here we've got our forget rid of SS we've got the template parts all, all nice and sort of modular content page this is what you know, this is you know the theme for for a page the search search content content itself um, yeah there's just so so much here and then of course we've got our archive comments and we've got footer functions.php so this is already sort of set up for, for us ready to go so we've got our starter theme set up Lo loads loads various bits and pieces pieces um, header index page and we've got the compiled style sheet so it's all there and of course if we go to our website we've got my starter theme is already sort of set up there ready to go if I click on activate, here it is, and what's that going to look like? Not much to write home about. What I might do is look at what this looks like with a bit more test data in it. We'll go into the dashboard and in our tools, we're going to import some data. Now we're going to run the WordPress importer. Now this, this is not installed in the default blank installation for WordPress. You have to install that yourself, but that's no big, no biggie. Just you'll see an install now button. Click that, and away you go. So let, let's run our importer. And I've run into an issue. WP content uploads is not writable to the server. Okay, yes, I forgot to update permissions on my on, on my um, site, so I'll just fix that. Oh, this is how I fixed it. I went into the root of my project, into the WP content folder, then. I made a directory called uploads Then the next thing to do was to change the permission of uploads to make it writable then I did a list just to check to make sure that that it all works um, if we look over here we see the uploads with the green background that's you know, my terminals way of sort of telling me that and we also see um, the directory is 
read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. So that's exactly what we're after. So now I've downloaded that. I'm just um, clicking to browsing here to my downloads folder theme unit test data dot wordpress dot xml open that and import that so this out so we're sitting there now so upload file and import and let's just um we'll download that and submit right Waited for it to do its thing, and now it's finally done. Let's have a look and see what we've got. We'll hit refresh. And here we have, we have a, a menu already nicely set up. We've got pages for testing all sorts of various things. As you can see here, it's all looking pretty ordinary. If we go to a mobile version of it, let's just have a look and see what it looks like in um, in mobile. We go to tools, more tools, and develop tools, and we'll click the little mobile thing. Here we go. We have a button. And, and a menu that already expands down so all the stuff's pretty pretty good it's given us a really good head start already and of course what we have to go and go and do now is mess around with the style sheets and the sass and sort of get it get it looking presentable right so that's how to get started with underscores setting up your own theme Thank you for watching, hope you got something out of it, and like, subscribe, leave a comment if you wish, and I'll see you in the next one.